Hey, how's it going, everybody? It's RC Maxfield here from the Back to 12 podcast. And in today's video, we'll discuss the latest in Texas Tech men's basketball, including a former five-star commit entering the transfer portal. We'll also talk about Zach Kitley's comments after the second Texas Tech spring football practice, and then give you an update as well on Texas Tech baseball, softball, and the Lady Raiders as they head up to Northwest Arkansas to face off against the Arkansas Razorbacks and the WNIT. But let's start with Texas Tech men's basketball as still no official announcement yet of who the head coach will be. All signs right now are pointing to Grant McCaslin of UNT. This has been speculated for what feels like months now, but really it's only been a couple of days. But in the coaching carousel, a couple of days feels like, well, we're in June now. But in all actuality, he feels like he's going to be the guy. But to kind of give a timeline on this, or at least one that kind of makes sense if Grant McCaslin is indeed the guy and all signs point to that. I would be unequivocally shocked if he wasn't. UNT plays in the semifinals of the NIT in Vegas on Tuesday, March 28th. So if they lose that game, the earliest that this could become official is March 29th. Make no mistake about it. I fully expect Grant McCaslin, if he is the guy and Again, it feels like he is, that he is getting his staff together, and as soon as he gets to Texas Tech, they hit the ground running, right? But that is the earliest that this could happen because, again, he wants to stay with his team and make sure that UNT can hopefully win the NIT, right? And now, if they win that game on the 28th, they then play on the 30th. So the earliest that comes out that this is official would be the 31st of March. So it just delays the timeline by about 48 hours or so. But that's kind of the timeline it feels like when it comes to Grant McCaslin. Now, when it comes to the roster for Texas Tech right now, Elijah Fisher officially entered the transfer portal. The five-star recruit from Toronto, Ontario, Canada entered the portal. And really, it was no surprise, right? There were some rumors of it last week. I had caught wind of it. It wasn't official at that point, but now it is um, that he is in the portal. And again, I've talked about it a few times. Guys are going to enter the portal. That does not mean they're going to leave. Do I know Elijah Fisher's intents to stay at Texas Tech or to leave? I don't, but there will be some guys that enter the portal just to have leverage and then could return to Texas Tech. I do expect some guys just to not even test the waters for Texas Tech because I think that they like the coach that's coming in. And I truly believe that at this point, you would think that, hey, maybe these players know what's going on. At least you would hope to some degree, um, but potentially they don't. But yes, Elijah Fisher is now in the portal. That makes four Red Raiders in the portal from this past season and Fardaz Amak, obviously KJ Allen, Robert Jennings, and now Elijah Fisher. But I want to backtrack a little bit to Grant McCaslin and ask you this. Would you like the Grant McCaslin hire if it actually became official at Texas Tech? Why for yes, in for no. I know I've asked y'all a variation of this question before and some of y'all... Uh, Gave me long-winded answers. I'm curious, though, would you like it? It's that simple. Why for yes or in for no? All right, let's get into Texas Tech football talk as uh, both Zach Kitley and Tim DeRuder met with the media after the second official practice of spring ball for the Texas Tech Red Raider football team. And really, Tim DeRuder's comments were, well, Tim DeRuder comments. They, uh, they don't really stand out much, but he gives some good information. But Zach Kitley, he had some things that stood out because – I don't know about you guys, but when it comes to hearing these two guys talk, I'm not necessarily as worried about either side of the football, but Tim DeRuiter is just absolutely balled out. and He's got a long laundry list of a resume in terms of producing at a high level. Zach Kitley obviously does too, but there were some bigger question marks, I guess, let's say, on the offensive side of the football. So I wanted to hear what he had to say about some of those question marks that were going into the offseason, how Texas Tech addressed them, and how they look early on, albeit in two practices for spring practice. He spoke highly of the offensive line and their communication early on. Remember, that was a big point of emphasis this offseason for the Red Raiders. He mentioned a couple of guys, both Western Kentucky transfers in Rusty Stats and Cole Spencer. Remember, Cole Spencer was on the team last year, took a medical red shirt. He's got an extra year of eligibility, his sixth year in college football. Rusty Stats is the center that transferred in. He will be the starting center for the Red Raiders if all goes according to plan, while Cole Spencer will be right there next to him to his left at the left guard spot. He also mentioned Jacoby Jackson, 
who transformed his body this offseason. And Jacoby Jackson is one of those guys that's super interesting to me because I think the tie, he's got high-level talent, period, end of story, and he's versatile. And that's something that I think Texas Tech desperately needs on this offensive line because, let's face it, they've struggled with injuries the past few years and really have struggled with lack of production at certain spots as well. So Jacoby Jackson brings an element of security in terms of depth an impactful depth that Texas Tech hasn't had on the offensive line. And he showed some of that last year. Uh, but I think it's great to hear that his body is in a lot better shape and he's ready to go and be a versatile guy. Remember, the offensive line, as it stands now, they flipped the tackles this year. So it's Monroe Mills at left tackle, Spencer at left guard, Stats at the center position. Dennis Wilburn moves from center to right guard, and then Caleb Rogers is now at right tackle, at least as it stands today. And then Jacoby Jackson is kind of that chess piece that they can interwork and be the versatile guy. He also mentioned a guy that I'm super interested in because of how he can change the offensive like complexity. I guess, um, for Texas Tech, and that's Dre McCray. Um, Kitley talked about how it was one of those plays where Texas Tech got sacked, but they play the play through, and uh, Dre McCray tracked down a 60 to 70 yard post route. Um, and the reason I'm bringing this up is he's a true speed guy, and that was exactly how Zach Kitley worded it when Trey McCray officially committed to Texas Tech. That's what I called him as well, was a true speed guy that Texas Tech just hasn't had in a long time, and Zach Kittley gave him a lot higher praise than I did. Um, he said that he's like Jakeem Grant when it comes to that speed. And as every Red Raider fan knows, it's hard to beat that. I mean, him and Kiki were right up there. Jakeem is probably in a league of his own when it comes to speed. And if Dre can have an impact like that, just from a speed perspective, that will open a lot of things up for Texas Tech, not only at the wide receiver position, but in the run game, the tight end game as well. Um, that's a big impact for Texas Tech. When it came to the run game, he mentioned Taj Brooks will be the lead guy, but I found it interesting that Cameron Valdez and Bryson Donnell will basically work as a duo in the RB2 spot. You saw those guys last year. He mentioned Valdez is more of the explosive guy. Bryson Donnell did a lot of good things in the passing game for Texas Tech in short spurts. It'll be interesting to see how those two guys really work together as a tandem at the R RB2 spot going into next season as Taj Brooks takes over that lead role for the Red Raiders. And really, it feels like this might be the first time Texas Tech has had a clear RB1 since DeAndre Washington. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but that kind of feels what it's like right now. And by no means am I trying to put Taj Brooks and then DeAndre Washington expectations on him. I'm not trying to do that, but it feels like this is a true RB1 situation for Texas Tech. And the last time they had that was with DeAndre Washington. He also spoke highly of the tight ends. I didn't know this stat, but this is an interesting one. They ran 12 personnel about 70 to 80% of the time last year, according to Kit. You know me. I love 12 personnel. I love a good tight end. He was super high on Baylor Cup. He mentioned him multiple times. They're still trying to make sure that Mason Tharp is healthy. They've got some other guys in that room as well, but he was really complimentary of Cup. And I mean, Baylor Cup is one of the highest ranked tight ends ever. Um, in the recruiting ranks, but now he's coming to Texas Tech, had a solid year last year. I expect him to be more involved this year in year two. It's only naturally right. Um, a reporter asked him, hey, who stands out on the defense? And right away, he said Steve Linton. I'm telling you guys right now, Steve Linton is going to be in the top five of sacks in the Big 12 this season. I'm calling it right now today on the recording of March 24, 2023. Steve Linton will have at least eight and a half sacks this year. Um, and he's going to be in the top five of the Big 12 this year. You can, you can bank on that. He also said that the young DBs were making an impact. Remember, you're going to have two guys out there in Samford um, and Jordan, probably on the two deep in the secondary for the Red Raiders. And also he said there's no lazy plays. They're always flying around. And he admitted that Tim DeRuiter got him a couple times in terms of the scheme. Um, and Kitley didn't put the guys in the right spot. But it's early on. Offensive line looks a lot better. That's a good sign. And I'm really happy to hear about the tight ends as well, that they're getting a lot of run and they could be used a little bit more in the passing game because they were on the field a lot last season. All right. Let's wrap it up with your weekend preview for Texas Tech Athletics, and it starts with the Lady Raider basketball team. Coach Gurlich and crew head up to Fayetteville, Arkansas to face up against the Arkansas Razorbacks in the Super 16 of the WNIT on Friday night. Just a phenomenal job 
by this team. They're just getting started. Bailey Moppin is her. She is great. She is going to be an impact player for the Ra Raiders a lot moving forward. Um, and it's just great to see this program getting back on track and getting that notoriety they deserve. As for the baseball field, well, number 14, Texas Tech heads to Austin to face off against the Longhorns. The Longhorns are not having a great go of it. Um, so far this season, but Texas Tech and the Red Raiders cannot say the same thing. They are number 14 in the country. They fought, face off against the Longhorns in their first Big 12 road test of the year. Also on the diamond, Texas Tech softball. They head down to Austin to face the number eight Texas Tech Longhorns. And listen, the job that Coach Snyder and crew have done early on in his tenure, this is just year one. They're 26 and eight. They already have more wins than they did last season. They already have secured an over 500 record. And oh, by the way, they're only eight home runs away from breaking the single season home run program record. Phenomenal job by those girls and Coach Snyder. Really great to see. Loved covering softball in my time out there at Texas Tech, calling those games. Really one of the most underrated programs there is. Go support those ladies if you can, if you're in the Austin area up for this weekend or hey go see a game over there at rocky johnson as well that's going to do it for me though if you want to join the fastest growing texas tech community here on youtube be sure to hit that subscribe button to stay in the know on everything texas tech athletics all year long right here on the back to 12 podcast channel